Hi there, and welcome to part two of our Believe series. We're in a 30-session adventure together called Believe, living the story of the Bible to become like Jesus. We did the first 10 parts before Easter, and now we're going into part two. Part one, if you look at the table of contents, if you have this little study guide or, or your Believe book that's the compilation of Scripture, part, part one was about what do I believe about my, my thinking. We've got to get our thinking right if we're going to get our living right, our practice. So part two is what should I do? How do I act when I believe this way? When I believe in God, then that he's a personal God and that he saved me and all of these important teachings in the first part, how do I then live out? What are my practices? And so if you look at the table of context, you'll see we're going to go through 10 key practices for living out our faith. These are the kind of practices that Jesus implemented in his own life, worship, prayer, Bible study, and so on. So our first topic is worship. And if you have your little study guide um, and you turn to page 93 there in a moment, we'll, we'll fill in some of these blanks and talk about uh, where we're going with this uh, worship topic before you begin to discuss in your group. Uh, you know, one thing I would say about worship is that you've probably noticed this. You can't not worship. I know that's a double, double negative. You're not supposed to talk that way. I'm married to an English teacher who has a master's degree in English, and she corrects me on, on my English sometimes. But I want to say it that way because it's true. You can't not worship. God created us as humans who worship. We will worship something. Fortunately, we get to choose who or what we worship, but we will worship. And, and I've traveled all around the world in many, many countries. And I, I just can't believe how many different ways and people worship and, th and things. I mean, some places people worship, it's animus. They worship trees and they worship spirits and they worship animals. Other places they worship um, in other very different ways than Christians. I've been to a snake temple in Africa where they put pythons around their neck while they're worshiping. And I've been to a place where they've got... Um, They've got, they think the monkeys are holy in Indonesia on the island of Bali. And they use, and they have monkeys involved in their worship. I mean, there are so many different ways that people worship. Um, and so we're wired for it. But how, do, how we do it is important and who we worship, obviously, is important. And so when we think about worship, why does God want us to worship him? Um, why does God need worship? I mean, it's, does he have a need for his ego to be stroked. And, he, and if we tell him, I love you, you're cool, you're great, you're worthy, enough times it makes it builds him up and makes him feel better? Eh, I don't think so. That's not God. I, I like to think of it as a, a relationship between a parent and, and a child. And if my child says, I love you, Dad, it means a lot to me because it tells me that our, our relationship is good. And, and, and so I find fulfillment in the fact that my child is fulfilled in, in our relationship. And I think that's how God is. He's re represented himself to us as a father. I think he, he, when he hears us worship him, you know, whether we're praying to him, whether we're uh, meditating, whether we're singing, one of the most common ways we think of worship is singing, praise and worship. Um, and God sees that coming from the heart. He knows, hey, my children get it. They get that I love them and that I've saved them. And I can tell by the way they're responding that our relationship is good. So the key question this week is, how do I honor God in the way he deserves? And he does deserve to be worshipped. And he deserves particularly to be worshipped for two reasons. And that's in the key idea. I worship God for who he is and what he has done for me. And I would say not just what he's done for me, but what he's done in salvation history as I look back and read the whole Bible. Those are the two primary reasons we worship for who he is. He deserves just because of who he is to be honored, to be respected, to be revered. But look at all he's done in history, as well as personally for me and for you. He deserves thanks for that. You read the Psalms, you'll notice over and over there are many Psalms that, that, that use this format. They talk about worshiping God for who he is and then for what he's done. They often reference the exodus from slavery. And we often reference the 
the cross in the empty tomb because that's the ultimate delivery from slavery. So we worship him for who he is and what he's done. The key verse is, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. That's often the way we think of worship. We think of singing, music and song. And that is a very key way to worship. And you might say, well, I can't do that because I can't sing. Well, I, I'm with you on that one. I'm not a very good singer either. I enjoy singing if there's a lot of people to drown me out. But, you know, there's one uh, verse that says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. So basically, if you just make a joyful noise, he's going to take that as worship, whether you're ready for the worship team and on the stage yet or not. <laughs> but, you know, music isn't the only way we worship. You know, there's Prayer is a significant way. Um, when we worship together corporately, there's communion, there's offerings, there's teaching. It's all a part of worship. Um, reflection on God's word when we're alone or when we're together. Is it, there, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways that we worship it, but it basically I think it means we're finding ways to honor God and, and declare Him on the throne rather than ourselves on the throne of our life. And that leads us to this key application, which says, I daily acknowledge God for who He is and what He has done for me. If you're not already doing that, why don't you try that this week? Every day, morning when you wake up, first thing when you open your eyes, Try to remember to say, okay, God, I want you to be on the throne of my life today rather than me. I want you to, you know, I want you to be in the driver's seat, if you will. That's a, that's a great practice to do every day. And then um, the, another key application here is I worship God privately and corporately with songs I sing, the words I speak, and the way I live my life. Even the way we live our life is worship. And you can worship the Lord privately and you should you might be driving down the road to work listening to worship music and that's or, or, or praying in your car um, of course it's great to open up our bible every morning and listen to god and reflect on what he says so private worship is important but there's something about corporate worship that is vital too and that's one of the things i've hated so much about this COVID interruption is you know a lot of people have um, stayed home because they had to at first, and it's wonderful that we could connect digitally. But then uh, some have gotten into a new pattern and a new habit, and haven't felt either haven't felt safe to come back, or just felt like I don't need to come back to corporate worship because I, I figured out how to stay in my pajamas on Sunday morning. But you know what? When you're ready, when you when you're comfortable, when you've had your shots or whatever it's going to take, we need to gather because this is the tradition of the church, and it's not just the tradition; it is the instruction of God. Let me read you one verse here about that from Hebrews 10. It says Hebrews 10:24 and 25. Let us not consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging each uh, one another. And all the more, as you see the day, capital D, that's the day of judgment, the day of Christ's return. All the more, as you see the day approaching. In other words, this idea that we get together to fellowship and, and worship together and encourage each other and support each other, we bodily, physically get into a small group or come to a worship service. This is instructed by God, and, it's, and he says it's going to be more important as we get closer to the end of time, not less important. So let's make sure that we uh, continue to push into both private and corporate worship as we, as we seek to honor the Lord. One more key application. When I attribute worth to God as a child of God, unmerited worth is attributed to me. I kind of see that kind of as what I was saying earlier about this father-child relationship. You know, I tell God, I, you are worth worthy. And that brings out something in me in terms of my relationship with God that, that wouldn't be, uh, my relationship with God wouldn't be as close if I was not um, in a posture of humility before him and of honoring him and revering him. And that's what worship is to me. I hope you have a good discussion as you move into that part of your group and that you will um, find value in reviewing these spiritual practices over the next weeks. God bless you. Mm -hmm.